Hello and welcome to Nanum. My name's John and I'm an application scientist here and with me is Michael Kuiper from CSIRO in Melbourne, Australia. And he's going to be telling us a bit about antifreeze proteins. Take it away, Mike. Thanks, John. It's wonderful to be here from uh, down south and, and welcome to my little presentation on antifreeze proteins. I used to actually do a PhD on antifreeze proteins back in the day and have continually worked in this area on and off uh, when people want a little bit of help. Um, so I just bring you first, for those of you who want to know more about antifreeze proteins, I'll just wanted to highlight this uh, molecule of the month series that was put up by David Goodsell on the PDB website. And it explains a wonderful amount of antifreeze proteins, what they are, how they work, and the different classes of antifreeze proteins that we see. Um, essentially, these class of proteins helps organisms survive in very cold environments. It Essentially, these proteins can bind to the surface of ice crystals and create a surface effect um, causing the freezing point to actually lower by a few degrees at times. And this is enough to allow the organism to survive in, in a freezing environment. So I, I do encourage you to look through this. This is a wonderful piece of work, a wonderful 101 uh, introduction to antifreeze proteins. I'll just turn that off for now so we have a bit more bandwidth. And I want to bring up the first structure here, which is an insect antifreeze. And this is from um, uh, mealworm, Tenebria molitor. It's a, it's a type of uh, beetle. And it has this wonderful antifreeze structure, which you can see, which is... Uh, a beta sheet um, roll, and it has this wonderful uh, cysteine uh, backbone in the middle here, holding the whole thing together quite tightly. And the most obvious thing about this structure is this uh, arrangement of threonine residues on the ice binding surface. So we notice that this is actually a very regular arrangement of threonine. So if we just pull up our little measurement tool here and we start to measure the distances here, we can get an idea of what the measurements are. So we can see along between the beta sheets, it's approximately somewhere between 4.7 to 4.8 angstroms in that direction. And when we look at the TXT motif, the distance in this direction is, is approximately about 7.3 to 7.4. Now, there's a bit of fluctuation, of course, because of motions in the molecule, but we can see this sort of distance here. Now, if we pull up an ice crystal, here is a, a model of a piece of ice. And, and the first thing I want to highlight to you is this regular arrangement of water molecules. So, of course, we're familiar with ice. When we think of snowflakes, it has this hexagonal symmetry. And if you look down the C-axis of this, you will see this um, hexagonal shape. Now, when we look at the prism face of ice, we can make similar measurements to what we did just before. So we can measure along here, and then we make a similar measurement along this distance, and we can see it's a very close match to the ice surface, ice binding surface of, of this antifreeze protein. So essentially what's happening is the protein has, an evol has evolved an ice binding surface, which is close enough to actually bind to the surface of the ice like we were discussing before. So, of course, this doesn't just happen once. This nature uh, comes up with the same solution many times. So I'll just take that away for a second and just highlight um, the spruce budworm antifreeze protein, which is another insect antifreeze. Um, but we can see this one is in blue. Uh, if we look at the backbone shape, it's actually a very different shape uh, compared to the Tenebrio antifreeze, but it still has this, this beta sheet barrel sort of structure. But you'll probably notice that one is a left-handed twist and one is a right-handed twist. But essentially, they still have the same ice binding surface, so the arrangement of threonine residues is essentially identical, allowing it to bind to the same, same ice binding surface. I'll just drop those away and bring up another one. This is the winter flounder antifreeze protein. 
Um, so this is a much simpler antifreeze protein. This is, in fact, a alpha helix type protein. And we can see there's a, a threonine residue which actually repeats every 11 amino acids along the axis of this, of this helix. Now, this antifreeze protein actually binds to a different ice binding plane. So if we bring up another ice binding uh, model of ice here, we can see how this binds. And it actually binds in what we call the 2021 binding plane. And the alignment here is in this direction. Now, what's interesting about the fish antifreeze protein is it's not as active as the insect antifreeze proteins. And that's essentially because fish are living in water and they never see a temperature below minus two degrees Celsius, which is the freezing point of seawater. So these, these antifreeze proteins only have to be as good as minus two degrees Celsius where the insect antifreeze proteins, because the insects live terrestrially, they're seeing temperatures more like minus 20 degrees in winter. So their antifreeze protein has to be much better. So this is the uh, essentially the introduction to antifreeze protein. So there's a few other structures we have here that people can play with. Um, so essentially that's that's what I wanted to just present in this short period of time we have. So hopefully that gives you a good idea. All right, perfect. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, looking forward to hearing uh, questions people have. All right, thanks again.